Well, the last and probably the broadest in subject matter is the rest of the house. We've got a lot of different things to edit here and different ways to edit. We may not go in depth on every single one of them, but you'll get a, a good flavor for how each of these should be attacked and fixed. Our main problems were that bar of light coming from the basement window, as you may remember. You know, just trying to get, again, things looking natural and pleasant. So this one, probably going to be some of our toughest edits, even though these aren't important rooms. So let's get hacking, okay? All right, now we're doing the rest of the house. And I thought I'd probably start with that funky room with the light that goes halfway across it, because that... That was pretty funky. Most, most of those other rooms you know how to handle and that shouldn't be a problem. But that room, that was funky. So let's go into that. Let's see, let's, this was an accidental flash. Let's go ahead and use it. Let's white balance right there. Let's bring our highlights down and our shadows up. We're gonna need some darkness in there and there we go. That's actually not too bad for just an accidental flash. So we'll go ahead and mark that one green as something we might be able to use. So the rest of these in this series are all accidental flashes. Here is our first real ambient exposure. Going to bring that up. And then let's bring the highlights down. Bring that up. And bring the shadows up and obviously we've got that really really bad line right there I'm seeing a lot of yellow and orange in that so I'm going to take them out in the color and saturation area and that helps we can pick this and I'm yeah there we go that's exactly that gets us the right ratio that looks pretty good for just getting the color back to what it should be we can go in here and bring in a linear gradient here up to about there and just see what happens when we lift the shadows yeah that's not going to solve the problem but that's not a bad exposure so let's mark that one green let's go to our real flashes there we go. And see, this should, yeah, see, we've got no uh, problem there at all. Just get a white balance off of there. So we're going to use that. This ambient, that's all we're going to use. And um, as ugly as that looked in real life, it's super easy to fix. So I'll just line them all up. Take the flashiness out of that one. You know what we might want to do here too is you know this is probably not a bad place to bring this up let's pull something out of that doorway let me find a good exposure for that doorway let's go here and it was white so let's go there and let's bring that exposure up and then let's use the saturation to pull that discoloration out and then let's send this into Lightroom and then we'll, it'll go into a new image and then what we'll have to do is copy this duplicate the layer into the image we're editing so we can close that now without saving it and then what we'll do is we'll just cut a mat around this. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to cut it right along the, the carpet line and the door frame. And then just hit mat. There, we've got a mat on it. It goes below the flash, but above the base level. 
Now let's take a look at that. Okay, here was without it, with it, and it makes absolutely no difference. Let's um, add a curve to it. I hold down the option key and that affects just that one layer. Use my little finger dinger and we'll just bring that up a little bit. Oh, I know why, because we're getting so much flash in it. I also have to adjust the mat on the flash. That's why. There we go. I am so dumb sometimes. Okay, let me take out that curves. I don't think we even need it. Well, it does look good, but let's lessen it some. Take the opacity down. There we go. That looks about right, doesn't it? That looks pretty good. All right, so let's combine all this to one layer. Send it into Photo AI and hope Topaz doesn't screw it up. Same old thing we always do here. All right, that looks pretty good. You know, there's not a whole lot you can do with this room, but um, we are going to make it look as good as we possibly can. Let's throw it into color FX. A little bit of contrast in there. And I don't even think we need um, light and dark and center. That, compared to what we started with, I think we've got a really good image there. Sometimes I like to do this too, just bring down the color effects just a little bit. Sometimes it looks good to your eye and then you realize it's just too much. So a lot of times with a lot of effects, I'll do them at 100% and then realize, oh, I got to back that down and go back down to 80% or something like that. And that tends to work a lot better. So, you know, don't, don't feel free to back things down. All right, let's save that. We are going to crop this a little bit and I am going to do the straighten lines. So let's see. Let's put one right there. and put one right there. And then in my opinion, we've got too much dead wall space there. So I'll just bring this in a little bit from there. Look at how those um, rules of thirds lines line up. I think that makes this far better. Boom, look at that. You know, I, I would not enter this in an art contest, don't get me wrong, but considering where that room started, I'm really happy with um, what we did there. All right, let's take a look at, let's see, what one should we do? Should we, you know what, let's do the bathroom. The bathroom was kind of fun. We haven't done a bathroom, have we? All right, here is our initial bathroom. You can see a lot of green in it. Obviously the exposure is a little down, so let's bring the exposure up to where we expect it. It's white balance. I love bathrooms because you've always got a good white balance. Got a lot of green and yellow in it. I'm just, I'm seeing it the thickest up here. So I'm gonna pull it down from there. You know, I just noticed this. See the writing in this light? I just learned a new lesson myself. On this lesson, me, I am learning. I'm gonna start looking for things like that. I've never noticed that before, but I don't like that. But I'm gonna start looking for things like that. And if I see them, I'm gonna turn that bulb or that shade around so that I don't see that. Because that's distracting and that's nothing that needs to be in a picture. So look at us. I'm learning from you. Thank you. Let's bring our highlights down and our shadows up. You know, you can almost use that. But we're not going to because we flashed it. Let's go here and then hit previous and use that for a window pull. That, that's a super fast window pull. No reason not to do that. 
because see that just glares a little bit too much and we've lost definition in it. This one, you can see the, the pattern in the glass and I like that. Let's, let's save that. And then we're also going to need that because I don't think, do we have a, we don't have a flash to hide the, the flash with. So we'll just use that to help hide the flash. And we'll white balance there. All right. So let's go that. That and that. And then we'll hit F2 to align all our thingies. And bring that down a mask on it let's cut this mask okay there you can see that green right there that is chromatic aberration and that generally happens when you've got something with extreme contrast which is what we have here so we will fix that on our round trip back to Lightroom. It is easily fixable and obviously does not belong there. Ooh, I screwed up. All right, there we go. Let's hit the mat button, and now the mats are cut. I am probably going to use the same layer twice, I'm thinking in this. I think I'm going to take this bottom layer, make another copy of it, and put it on top, and mask it completely out, and I'll show you why in just a second. But first, we need to combine, well, you can see why. I'm seeing the bottom of the flash there. Let's go ahead and bring these two together. There we go. I think that looks really good. And then we'll just use this top layer just to finish taking that flash out. Um, we need white. Hit X, so we're painting white. Again, notice your problems and figure out how to fix them and then fix them. You know, there's no reason why you can't make another copy of a layer and make adjustments to that layer uh, to fix something that, that you've screwed up. There we go, that looks as good as this room's gonna look. Let's um, save it back to Lightroom and we'll do our verticals and we'll do our chromatic aberration adjustments here. So let's go right there and right there. There we go. Let's see. Oh, chromatic aberrations. So now we go in. Let's go up to. Let's see how that works. Are we going to get it? Yep, it right there. Come back till they come back in, and then. I think we need to go a little. There we go. That's it. And then we should do, look at least at the other side. Yeah, there's a little bit of orange or purple right in there. So let's set our things at about the same. And they're gone. So that's now been straightened. The chromatic aberrations have been removed. And then we do our final little bits of polish on this and that's number one to um, denoise it and 
put some minor sharpening into it. export that back and then we'll just do I, I I'm not even sure that it needs some contrast from Nick but you know one of my thoughts is that if you do it for some of the images you kind of got to be consistent for all the images that you deliver in that set at least so we are going to go ahead and Nickify it that way like I said all the images in that set are more cohesive there we go and that's it save and we're out that about does it for this house i would welcome any comments questions criticisms pointers, anything you want to tell me that you thought I did wrong, anything you thought I did right, anything you didn't understand, anything like that, let me know. Um, I'm super available and, um, you know, I would love to hear from you. If we can make this work better for more people, more power to all of us, right? So let's talk about it. Let's do things to make each other better photographers. May your next shoot be your best shoot.